Hello friends, welcome to the next session on design of column base, that is column foundations. Today we will be taking the next case, that is gusseted base. First note down the problem, I will explain the differences between gusseted base and slab base. Design a gusseted base on a concrete pedestal. Pedestal is nothing but a short column, short foundation. For the column ISHB 400 at 757.5 newtons per meter with two flange plates, the plates which are connected to the flange. Two flange plates 400 by 20 400 is the width 20 is the thickness if this is my eye section this black one for that to have some extra strength we provide cover plates the plates which we provide on the flange these are also called as flange plates so 400 is this dimension 20 is the thickness for this eye section I get the values from steel table carrying a factor load of 4000 kilonewtons the column is to be supported on a concrete pedestal of M20 grade. So for this, we need to design the suitable foundation. Before we start with this design, let us try to understand what is the basic difference between slab base and gusseted base. Whatever problems we have studied so far, there, if this was my slab base on that slab base I will be providing a base plate and over this base plate will be my eye section now many times when loads are very less, directly I can use this section and I can provide welding on all four sides. This should be sufficient. But sometimes when loads are very very high, only provision of this much may not be suitable. For that, we need to provide a gusset. Gusset means additional angles and plates on the flange side. So that type of foundation we call it as a gusset base. So as we start with the studies, we will understand the things. Before that, let us try to see a typical cross section of a gusset base. Suppose, this is my concrete base, over that concrete base, I will be providing A base plate this base plate will be supporting an eye section for this eye section we provide additional cover plates now only providing this cover plates may not be sufficient because at the bottom side where the slab where the column connects to the slab there are a lot of additional loads so apart from the cover plates we provide gusset plate another plate which runs parallel to this so these are called as gusset plates and to connect this all this connection to the base plate we provide an angle here This angle is called as cleat angle. This is my eye section. This green is cover plate. This red is gusset plate. This black part is cleat angle. This cleat angle we are going to connect to the base plate. And very important is I have to design the connection between this column and this cleat angle or this gusset plate. So that we will be designing the things now. Also, I need to determine the dimension and thickness of this base plate. So let us continue with the start studies. <coughs> Suppose this is the I section. From steel table, I get the dimensions of the I section. Width B 250. Height H 400. This is supported by cover plates on both the sides. Say this cover plate is dimension given as 400 by 20. So 400 is width, 20 is thickness. This is my typical section. 
I get all these dimensions from steel table. So step one. Area of plate. And to find area of that plate, first I need to find bearing pressure of concrete. Bearing pressure of concrete is equal to 0.45 FCK. So that is 0.45 into FCK is character strength of concrete 29 Newtons per mm square. Area of plate required is factor load divided by bearing pressure. Let that length dimension be L1 into B1. L1 and B1 are the dimension of the base plate is equal to 4000 kilotons. Let me convert that into newtons divided by 9. So I get the value triple four minus 44 into 10 raised to 3 mm square. This is the dimension required. Now I need cross sectional uh, area of the base plate is found out. Now I need to determine what are the dimensions of the base plate. So to understand that, let me write all the values in a tabular form. First component second length for that let us see a typical diagram this black line this hole indicates base plate this is my i section this green line indicates cover plate this red indicates gusset plate and this is the angle so I need to find out this dimension. So this dimension should be greater than from here till here. I know what is height h of the I section from here till here. I know thickness of base plate. Sorry, thickness of cover plate. I know thickness of gusset plate. I know this dimension of the angle. So I will be writing these things in a tabular form. So first component. H of I section so that is 400 mm height of the I section next cover plates there are two cover plates of 20 mm thickness this dimension this cover plate from here to here this is 20 mm thick so 2 into 20 I get 40 next assume gusset plate so these are the additional plates which you provide near the foundation gusset plate assume 16 mm 16 into 2 32 cleat angle so assume 150 by 150 by 10 so dimension will be 150 into 2 because one cleat angle second cleat angle so I get this dimension as 300 you add all these things you get 772 mm so 772 I am going to round it off to 800 mm provide L1 is equal to 800 mm square now I know L1 into B1 is equal to triple 4 minus 4 into 10 raised to 3. So substitute here L1 get the value of B1. So B1 is equal to triple 4 minus 4 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 800. You get the value 515 mm say 600 mm. Therefore my base plate dimensions are fixed now 800 by 600. Now let us find out upward pressure on plate. So that is PU factor load divided by L1 into B1. That is area of base plate provided. 4000 into 10 raised to 3 
divided by 800 into 600 so w we get 8.33 newtons per mm square let us continue with the typical plan and elevation say this is my eye section from here to here two cover plates this green line indicates cover plates besides that and that is supported by an eye section sorry that is supported by gusset plate on both these sides so this gusset plate will be seen here in the plan like this Over this gusset plate, I provide cleat angle on both these sides. So let me write all these things. This is I section. This green is cover plate. This black indicates gusset plate and this indicates cleat angle so cleat angle will be seen here like this now this is subjected to upward pressure that is w1 This dimension is L1 is equal to 800. This dimension is B1 is equal to 600. Now we'll start with this analysis. So here the basic concept you need to understand. We are designing this cover plate, sorry, this base plate for cantilever action. Now let me draw a detailed diagram, bigger diagram of this cleat angle. This cleat angle or let, the diagram is not very good. I will draw another one. Its typical shape is like this. So there is some rounded portion here. What is assumed is this dimension is R1. R1 value you get from steel tables that is 12 mm. When you are fixing this cleat angle to the base plate, what is assumed is till this dimension of R1 it is fixed. After this, there is cantilever action. So I am going to design this for the cantilever strength. If this is my plate angle, so this is my section. Let that section be x, x. Now my task is to find out this dimension. What is the cantilever length of this part? this base plate as well as cleat angle so let us find out this so overall from here this dimension is 150 mm before that let us find out this dimension what is this part so from my calculations I know from here till here this dimension is 7 71 sorry 772 I have provided 800 so this dimension will be 800 so this dimension will be 800 minus 772 divided by 2 800 minus 772 divided by 2 so you get the answer 14 mm 
so 14 mm is this cantilever projection from here till here but till here it is fixed so i need to find out this fixity this length till here so from here till here the overall dimension is from here till here it is 150 from here till here 150 this is 14 next thickness of split angle minus minus 10 next r1 radius at the root minus 12 you get the dimension 142 so 142 mm is the overall cantilever portion hanging portion so i have to design for that so i will draw another detailed diagram showing that it is fixed here this one let this dimension be 142 mm this is the upward force w is equal to 8.33 mpa newtons per mm square now i have to find bending moment at this section x x moment at x x m x x is equal to w into l into l by 2 w into l into l by 2 so w is 8.33 length is 142 l by 2 is 142 by 2 you get 83.98 into 10 raised to 3 newton em now i will find sectional modulus z e is equal to i y y i is for rectangular section bd cube by 12 y is d by 2 depth divided by 2 so you get overall bd square by 6 now to analyze this section what we do is we consider 1 mm width of strip a strip parallel to this which is 1 mm so b is equal to 1 thickness d or depth t d here overall i have to consider depth from here till here so this d will be let this thickness be t and i know this dimension as 10 so d will be t plus 10 so d is equal to t plus 10 so substituting all these values i need to find out design bending moment design moment it is given in page 53 is 800 so design moment md is equal to 1.2 into sectional modulus z e f y by gamma m naught so substitute all the values md is bending moment acting so that is 83.98 into 10 raised to 3 into 1.2 into z e z e is bd square by 6 b is 1 d is t plus 10 whole square divided by 6 into fy is 250 gamma m naught is 1.1 so solving this we get t is equal to 32.9 say 34 mm provide base plate of dimension 800 by 600 by 34 so this is how i finalize the base plate thickness using moment equation now we'll start with the next part so i have to design the bolted connection step 3 bolted connection here bolt dimensions are not given so let us assume them assume m18 8.8 .8 grade hsfg bolts so i have to find its bolt value so bolt value for hsfc bolt is given by nominal strength divided by 
फैक्टर ऑफ सेफ्टी वन पॉइंट टू फाइव इन टू पॉइंट फाइव फाइव इन टू एन ई नंबर ऑफ शेयर इंटरफेस नंबर ऑफ शेयर इंटरफेस हेयर इज टू बिकॉज देर आर टू शेयर इंटरफेस इन टू के एच इज वन इन टू ए एन बी एरिया ऑफ होल्ड एट थ्रेड्स जीरो पॉइंट सेवेंटी एट इन टू फाइव बाई फोर इन टू डाया स्क्वेयर डाया इज एटीन स्क्वेयर इन टू स्मॉल एफ नॉट सो कैपिटल एफ नॉट सो कैपिटल एफ नॉट इज जीरो पॉइंट सेवन इन टू स्मॉल एफ नॉट एट हंड्रेड सो सब्सिट्यूट ऑल द वैल्यूज यू गेट वी डी एस एफ इज इक्वल टू वन जीरो वन पॉइंट फोर एट इन टू टेन डेज टू थ्री न्यूटन्स इज इक्वल टू वन जीरो वन पॉइंट फोर किलो न्यूटन्स नाउ लेट एस अज्यूम द कनेक्शन डिटेल्स अज्यूम एंडस ऑफ कॉलम आर मिल्ड और स्मूद और मशीनड इट मीन्स देर फोर लोड ऑन फ्लाइंस विल बी हाफ ऑफ द टोटल लोड हाफ विल बी टेकन बाय वेब हाफ विल बी टेकन बाय द फ्लाइंस सो फोर थाउजेंड डिवाइड बाय टू यू गेट टू थाउजेंड किलोमीटर्स नेक्स्ट लोड ऑन ईच फ्लाइंस This two thousand is load taken by both flanges together. Load on each flange is equal to two thousand divided by two. You get one thousand kilonewtons. Now for this, find out number of bolts. Number of bolts on flange is equal to one thousand divided by bolt value one zero one point four eight. You get nine and or something like that. Provide ten bolts. Next step four. Design of concrete base. Assume S B C is equal to two fifty kilonewtons per meter square. S B C is not given, so let us assume it. To design foundation, you need working loads. So working load is equal to P U divided by one point five. So factor load directly one four thousand is given divided by one point five, you get two sixty six point six seven kilonewtons. Two triple six point six seven kilonewtons. Self weight of column it is assumed at ten percent is equal to two triple six point six seven into ten divided by hundred. So you get two double six point six six. So adding all these, you get two nine three three point three kilonewtons per meter. Now let us find out area of concrete base. L into B is equal to load divided by S B C two fifty. You get eleven point seventy three meters square. Provide. For simplicity, provide square base. So L is equal to B is equal to square root of eleven point seven three. You get three point four three. Say three point four five. Therefore, area of concrete base is equal to L into B is equal to Three point four five meters. Now let us try to find out thickness of the concrete base. Let this be the concrete base. So this dimension L is equal to three point four five. This is the B. Three point four five. Over this rests my base plate. And on this base plate will be my I section with all its other attachments. So let me ignore that. So here I am interested in finding what are the projections. Let this dimension be point six meters. This is zero point eight. Point six by point eight are the dimensions of the. Base plate. So 
so this dimension will be 3.45 minus 0.8 divided by 2 3.45 minus 0.8 divided by 2 you get 1.325 Now let me find this dimension. So this dimension will be 3.45 minus 0 0.6 divided by 2. 3.45 minus 0 0.6 divided by 2. So you get 1.425. So let me draw a plan of it. Over this will be. base plate and over the base plate will be the load so consider the higher dimension 1.425 1.325 whichever is the highest consider that 1.425 assume load dispersion at 45 degrees so for 45 degrees if this angle is 45 this dimension this dimension will be same so i get 1.425 Assume load dispersion at 45 degrees, therefore D is equal to 1.425 meters. Provide concrete base of dimension 3.45 into 3.45 into 1.425 this completes the design so we need to draw a detailed diagram showing all its detail so let us start with the detailing part let this be the eye section this eye section is covered by cover plates for some width. This eye section rests on base plate. Over that I section will be my cleat angle I'm getting it concrete base sorry base plate cleat angle now its dimension this dimension this is 250 core plate dimensions are 400 this base plate dimension it is I will show it here base plate dimension is 600 sorry 800 600 by 800 so I am going to consider higher dimension and this is resting on concrete base which is 3.45 meters So this dimension is 3.45 so I am going to connect this like this so let this be dotted line which continues here now I have to show 10 bolts whichever I have designed those 10 bolts I will be providing for the column and this one so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Now I have to fix this cleat angle to the base plate and concrete by using anchor bolts.
anchor bolts 16 mm dia now to connect this gusset plate and plate angle we provide some additional bolts nominal 12 mm dia bolts so this is the detailing of a typical gusset base thank you